He is known for being an Italian philosopher, educator, and politician. He is recognized for providing an intellectual foundation for Italian fascism. He is Giovanni Gentile. Giovanni Gentile, the influential Italian philosopher, educator, and politician, was known as the philosopher of fascism. His contributions to Italian fascism were not limited to politics but extended to providing an intellectual foundation for the movement as well. Gentile was deeply involved in the resurgence of Hegelian idealism in Italian philosophy, and he also developed his own unique system of thought known as, actual idealism, or actualism. As the protagonist of our story, Gentile's philosophical journey was marked by his exploration of the subjective extremes of the idealist tradition. He believed that reality is a product of the mind and that true existence lies in the individual's consciousness. Gentile's philosophy emphasized the importance of the subjective experience and the power of the human mind in shaping reality. His concept of actual idealism sought to reconcile the subjective and objective aspects of reality, asserting that true knowledge and understanding can only be achieved through the active engagement of the individual with the world. Gentile's philosophical ideas not only had a profound impact on Italian philosophy but also played a significant role in shaping the ideology of Italian fascism. His writings, including his collaboration with Benito Mussolini on The Doctrine of Fascism, provided a theoretical framework for the movement. Gentile's belief in the power of the individual's consciousness and the subjective nature of reality resonated with the core principles of fascism, which emphasized the strength and will of the individual in shaping society. Despite the controversial nature of his association with fascism, Giovanni Gentile's contributions to philosophy, particularly his development of actual idealism, remain a significant part of his legacy. His exploration of the subjective extremes of idealism and his emphasis on the power of the human mind continue to inspire philosophical discussions and debates to this day. Giovanni Gentile, a renowned philosopher, believed that fascism was the embodiment of the Risorgimento ideals, particularly those championed by Giuseppe Mazzini and the historical Right Party. He saw fascism as an opportunity to make his philosophy the foundation of a political ideology. However, Gentile faced a challenge with the organic nature of the fascist party itself, as it emerged naturally rather than being based on a pre-established doctrine. This lack of consensus among fascists complicated Gentile's vision, but he saw it as an embodiment of his belief in natural organic growth and dialectical opposition. Despite the challenges, Gentile's philosophy gained recognition and credibility through his association with Benito Mussolini, who acknowledged Gentile's ideas by promoting his authorship. However, the problem of the party persisted for both Gentile and Mussolini, as there was no unified way of thinking among fascists. Nevertheless, Gentile saw this as a reflection of how a state or party doctrine should evolve, with diversity and dialectical opposition intact. While Gentile placed himself within the Hegelian tradition, he also distanced himself from certain aspects he considered flawed. He criticized Hegel's dialectic and proposed that everything is spirit, with the dialectic residing in the act of thinking itself. Gentile took issue with Marx's conception of the dialectic, viewing it as a fundamental flaw in its application to system making. According to Gentile, Marx had externalized the dialectic, turning it into an object within a material process of historical development. Gentile believed that the dialectic was not an independent, positive entity but rather a product of human thinking. He argued that concepts such as upward and downward or heat and cold only existed as dialectical opposites within human thought. They could not be confirmed as external realities separate from human perception. Gentile deemed Marx's externalization of the dialectic as an absurd and fetishistic mysticism. In conclusion, Giovanni Gentile's philosophy played a significant role in shaping fascism, aligning it with the ideals of the Risorgimento. Despite the challenges posed by the organic nature of the fascist party, Gentile saw it as an opportunity for natural growth and dialectical opposition. He distanced himself from Hegelian and Marxist views on the dialectic, proposing that it was an inherent part of human thinking rather than an external object. Gentile's insights continue to be relevant today, encouraging us to reflect on the nature of political ideologies and the role of human perception in shaping reality. Giovanni Gentile, born in Castelvetrano, Italy, was a philosopher who drew inspiration from various intellectual movements of his time. One of his influences was Friedrich Nietzsche, whose concept of the Ubermensch resonated with Gentile's own idea of the Uomo Fascista. Gentile was also influenced by Italian intellectuals such as Mazzini, Rosmini, Gioberti, and Spaventa, who introduced him to the concept of self-construction or autocticide. Additionally, Gentile was mentored by German idealist and materialist thinkers like Karl Marx, Hegel, and Fichte, who shared his goal of creating a theory for a structure of knowledge that made no assumptions. 
Despite his diverse influences, Gentile presented himself as a Catholic in matters of religion, and he emphasized the Christian heritage of actual idealism. However, there are instances where he identified as an atheist while still acknowledging his cultural Catholic background. This complex relationship between his religious identity and philosophical beliefs added depth to Gentile's intellectual journey. Gentile's academic career flourished, and he achieved great success as one of four exceptional students at the prestigious Scuola Norma Superior di Pisa. Graduating in Letters and Philosophy in 1898, he wrote a dissertation titled, Rosmini e Gioberti, under the guidance of Donato Giaja, a disciple of Bertrando Spaventa. This dissertation showcased Gentile's dedication to exploring the works of influential thinkers and their impact on his own philosophical development. Throughout his career, Gentile held various positions in academia, contributing to the field of philosophy in shaping the minds of future generations. His multidimensional background and diverse influences allowed him to approach philosophical questions from unique perspectives, making him a notable figure in the intellectual landscape of his time. Giovanni Gentile's philosophy continues to be relevant as we navigate the complexities of modern life. His exploration of self-construction, the blending of different intellectual traditions, and the examination of religious identity offer valuable insights into understanding oneself and the world. By embracing the diverse influences that shape our lives, we can develop a more nuanced understanding of our beliefs and values, ultimately leading to a richer and more meaningful existence. Giovanni Gentile, a prominent Italian philosopher, found himself deeply intertwined with fascism in the early 20th century. In 1922, he was appointed as the Minister of Public Education under the government of Benito Mussolini. Taking on this role, Gentile implemented a significant reform known as the Reforma Gentile. This reform had a lasting impact on the Italian education system, reflecting Gentile's belief that philosophy and life were inseparable. Gentile's philosophical works, such as The Theory of Mind as Pure Act and Logic as Theory of Knowledge, formed the basis of his ideology, which he called actual idealism. He argued that philosophy should not be isolated from life, but rather should directly influence and shape it. For Gentile, philosophy was a governing force that could penetrate all aspects of life. As his influence grew, Gentile played a crucial role in shaping the fascist state. In 1925, he led two constitutional reform commissions that helped establish the corporate state of fascism. He went on to become the president of the fascist state's Grand Council of Public Education and gained membership on the powerful fascist Grand Council itself. Gentile's philosophical system formed the foundation of fascist philosophy, which viewed thought as all-encompassing. He believed that reality was unthinkable except in relation to the activity of thinking, and that every phenomenon was centered within a unified spiritual and transcendent framework. This philosophy served as an idealist foundation for legal naturalism, further reinforcing Gentile's belief in the absolute power of self-identification. Gentile's close association with Mussolini and fascism earned him the title of, the philosopher of fascism. In fact, he even ghostwrote the first part of, The Doctrine of Fascism, an essay attributed to Mussolini. Gentile described the characteristics of Italian fascism at the time, including state corporatism, the abolition of the parliamentary system, and autarky. Despite the downfall of the fascist government in 1943, Gentile remained loyal to Mussolini. He supported Mussolini's establishment of the Republic of Salo, a puppet state of Nazi Germany, even though he had criticized its anti-Jewish laws. Gentile accepted a position in its government and became the last president of the Royal Academy of Italy. Giovanni Gentile's involvement with fascism raises important questions about the relationship between philosophy and life. His belief in the direct influence of philosophy on society reminds us that our ideas and beliefs have real-world consequences. It serves as a reminder that we must critically examine the ideologies we subscribe to and consider how they shape our actions and interactions in our daily lives. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.